Good afternoon, YouTube. Mickey Shook here. Going to wait a minute until a couple of folks jump on the live broadcast here. But for those of you that are listening recorded, just bear with me a moment. Yes, I'm on the roadway today. Yes, I am obeying all the rules of the road and paying attention to everything around me as I cover tens of thousands of miles a year safely. So, don't you fret. Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys. Let's talk a little bit about hockey pucks versus gunmen. So for those of you that haven't seen the news today, Google up Michigan University and hockey pucks. And you will see that in the genius brains of the faculty at this university, they decided to purchase, I believe, several thousand hockey pucks, of which hundreds of them were given to students and faculty. Hockey pucks, not rocks, actual hockey pucks. So they've gotten hockey pucks, and what part of the press release says to throw them at the gunmen to distract them. No, this isn't rocks, this is hockey pucks. But I think the people that came up with this have brains that are made out of rocks. Now, let's discuss a few things. One, in my home state of Illinois, you can't hear me, I'm breaking up. Is it me that's breaking up or is it your connection? Before I continue, guys, somebody give me a thumbs up. Is my audio five by five or am I coming in crummy? Somebody let me know. Let me know, let me know, let me know. Okay. It's just a, another study here. Illinois years ago, when we were working to pass the concealed carry law here in Illinois, one of the bits of data that we used to explain the need to have actual weapons to defend oneself was a physical document that the state police, our Illinois state police created to give to girls on college campuses. And it basically was discussing what to do in the event of a rape. They told the girls to carry a comb or hairbrush that they could scratch the bad guy's face with. Scratch. If that didn't work and screaming didn't work, to just go limp and relax your body because if your body was relaxed you'd be less prone to being injured and torn as you were penetrated by your rapist. No joke, this shit is real. So this idea of, of placating evil and placating criminals is about the most absurd thing possible and the fact that it's coming out of academia, coming from universities, is even more ridiculous. So guys, a hockey puck against a gun. Any of you guys that have shot a gun realize that, yeah, if you throw a hockey puck at somebody's face, it's gonna hurt. And even 20 kids throwing a hockey puck at a person coming through a door is awesome. How many people are gonna have that hockey puck ready? They're gonna carry that half pound of rubber around all day long, and then it's gonna be ready for when the time strikes. It's bullshit. It's not legitimate, it's not a real course of action, it's not a real plan. Think about this, if you were being attacked by a bear, yes, you could pick a stick up, you could punch the bear in the nose, you could spray the bear with pepper spray, you could make loud noises, but if you're really being attacked, not threatened, but attacked, all of those things don't do much of anything against a bear. See, because once you're under attack, especially by something or somebody that has a much greater level of force, you're screwed, okay? You are screwed, and it is usually pure luck if you survive at that point. The only thing that combats a madman with a gun is a good man with a gun. This is why police officers do not show up with hockey pucks. 
None of us have ever seen a police officer walking around with like a vest on with pucks. Nobody sees a war movie where a guy yells, I'm out of pucks! Yo! I'm out of pucks! And then a guy takes a, a, a bandolier full of hockey pucks and whips it across a room and the guy reaches out and grabs that bandolier of hockey pucks and he's like, no. Why? Because they're not legitimate weapons, guys. They're not legitimate weapons. This is a fallacy. And really, the issue here is not about hockey pucks. The issue is that we are afraid to do what is required to live. We are afraid to do what is required to prevail. I would never tell my wife or my daughter or my sister or any woman lay on the ground and just go limp so you can be raped. I would tell my wife, and I have, my daughter, other female loved ones, you fight and you scratch and you cut and you stab and you punch and you poke and you bite. And if you die trying, I'll know my little girl or my sister or my wife didn't just lay there and take it. Yeah, that's a hard pill to swallow. I'm sure going to sleep at night, being a family member of a victim like that would also be a hard pill to swallow. But at least, at least you did not make it easy for somebody trying to freaking rape you. If, here's a big problem. So we have these violent shootings. People. You guys need to understand that violence in our world is on a decline. It has been for decades. Violence in America is on a, de on a decline. If you look at studies from organizations like Anytown USA, they're biased, BS, non-scientific studies. They, they list that every school shooting, technically speaking, there's things listed in there like somebody's committing suicide on the property of a school is considered a school shooting. There's things like a security guard accidentally discharging a firearm. They're listed as school shootings. In reality, and it is a horrible, tragic fact, there are people, and this is a new phenomenon in America, people causing these mass murders. That's a new thing. But as a whole, pr predator, predation, pardon me, predation of humans is on a decline. We're not having genocides by the millions of people like we once were. We're not having and seeing the kind of killing and slaughter that took place for all of eternity in the human race. So get it out of your head that we are more dangerous and more violent than ever. In fact, it's the exact opposite. Do some research if you don't believe me. Look at real data. Uh, data, FBI crime report, the Bureau of Justice, things like that. Look at real data like that uh, and not just opinions from news uh, newscasters and, and, and uh, folks that have special interest to ban weapons or promote weapons because I don't want you to even read like NRA's propaganda uh, look at facts look at facts but here's the thing guys if you're young if you're a young person and you're listening to this develop the mindset that you will do righteous violence against anybody that's going to hurt innocent life righteous violence means that you are right in your actions it means that a jury of your peers a jury of of people from your community would judge your actions to be prudent would judge your actions to be reasonable based on what an average reasonable sound person would do purpose in your heart in your mind that if a setting like that was to take place you would commit righteous righteous violence pardon me if needed you could also run away you get it for you adults begin to train your young people to do that see these things these things happen because we let them happen that shooting uh, that recently took place in Alabama was quickly thwarted by a good guy with a gun 
And I'm not here to say a good guy with a gun solves every problem. They don't. There's a lot of good people with guns that do stupid, negligent, reckless, and careless things because they carry a weapon that wields great power and great potential to inflict harm up to and including death, but they don't put in the time, the energy, the effort, and really, it's a trade-off. The effort I'm talking about in energy is to learn, to really grow and develop, to develop uh, the craft to be able to protect yourself, right? So, do not, do not allow your people in your community, your local government, your state government, Congress, not Congress, but state reps, state uh, uh, senators, your local sheriff, elect people into office that understand that your life, that your child's life is precious. So precious indeed that it should be allowed to be protected. It is allowed to be protected, but that it should be allowed to be protected without fear of repercussion by any and all means necessary. Your life is but once, my friend, and then it goes away. We have this notion that we can throw hockey pucks at people with guns knowing that there will be death in that occurrence. Why would we not want to arm people in a way that they can deal with that? You are, sir, a practitioner of righteous violence. See, here's the other thing, guys. There's stories of, there's a story of, I believe in airline in the 1970s was hijacked. Uh, the hijacker, looked this one up, was torn limb from limb by the passengers on the plane. They covered up his body with some blankets and sent the drink cart around after the fact. Hey, hey! You get it? Now, we have raised a nation of people, and this is systemic, systemic, system-wide, system-wide. Young men don't know how to fucking change car tires, pardon my French. Young ladies don't know how to do basic uh, tasks. And I'm not being sexist, but we're not training young people as a society. I did to my children. I know some people in my family are with their kids, but they're not training their children to be resilient, to be uh, able to put up with some level of adversity. We've trained them to be comfortable, to, to uh, find it necessary, <clears throat> excuse me, to always be uh, placated, to have the video game, to, to have snacks, to not go, uh, Chuck, I woke you up to not go uh, a little bit without eating, you know, just to everything to be comfortable and nice all the time. I'm not suggesting that we make life hard for our children. My beautiful teenage daughter that you guys see in videos, she's out shoveling ice off the driveway the other day. I've got her out. See, we, we put gas in her car, so she needs to bring wood off the wood pile into the house every day, right? She cleans toilets, washes dishes, vacuums floors, uh, goes and spreads salt, runs errands for me and mom, etc. I don't baby my children. Why? Because that's not how it works, guys. When you look in nature, there is no creature that thrives and survives by getting by. The creatures that thrive and survive dominate. You get it? In the forest, the trees that grow taller are the ones that suck up the most moisture, that capture the most sunlight, not the one that just timidly lets the other trees grow over it. Hey guys, I'll catch up later. It doesn't work that way. There is a certain dignity with work and effort. I mop, I scrub floors, I dig ditches, I've busted concrete, I've stripped shingles off of thousands and thousands of square feet of roof in my life. I have hand sanded thousands of square feet of floor in my life. I have painted thousands of 
gallons of paint in my life. I'm not afraid of work. And I'm not even talking about work per se, but just the ability to, to see a situation and do what's required. If you need to pick a broom up and clean up a mess, pick up the mess. If somebody needs help, help them. And most importantly, if it's you, understand that it is your life. It is your life to protect. If I'm in a courthouse, if I'm in an airplane, if I am in the president's Oval Office, if I am on this road right now, in a movie theater, wherever, my life, mine, is mine to protect. I don't give a flying shit. I don't give a flying shit what rules exist where I'm at. My natural born right as a living, breathing creature, my right given to me by the creator, the universe, the cosmos, is to protect my life. Nobody gives me that right. Government does not bestow that right upon me. See, our founding documents don't give us rights, you guys. They're not, the government does not say, here are the rights we are giving you. That is how some countries work. The country defines the rights as being unalienable, right? Those rights came from a power greater than us. Evolutionary God, whatever you want to call him or her or it, your choice. You don't get to tell me or my children or my family whether or not we have a right to use righteous violence to protect life and limb. You don't get to. So when our teachers, our teachers are teachers who have become so open-minded to allow people to no longer have gender specificity, specificity, Specific. Yeah, you get the word. I can't remember a hard one with that today. We don't have to have any specifics when it comes to gender. Yet, yet, you can leave your life in the balance. You can leave your life hanging in the balance when it's on the line. Because clearly, clearly you can just go get another life at Walmart. You can pick at a local grocery store or gas station, right? This is a brain issue, guys. This is a heart issue. It's an issue of how we actually, thank you, specificity, thank you. Sometimes I talk so much that it's hard for me to get a word out. Correct, the Constitution was not just there to remind, it's there to enshrine, man, for all of time. And we the people, okay? We the people need to remind from time to time. We the people. And it's interesting to me that oftentimes we see things like this hockey puck bullshit and we pass it around on social media. Who's gone to a city council meeting and fought to allow firearms in your local schools? Gone to a school board meeting, a county board meeting, a, a, a uh, 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 meeting at your... Uh, state level for um uh, ooh, ah, ah, makes me sound really stupid i apologize for your department of education for the state that you live in see when we don't do anything these people that don't appreciate that your rights are unalienable these people that don't understand the sacredness of the oath sworn by those constitution framers and drafters yeah, man, Israel's a good organization. But even then, so I'm, I'm part of these organizations. Even then, being a member of NRA or ISRA, you're still relying on a handful of people to go out and do the work, to lobby, to educate. The problem is that we have systemically across our nation is we need to systemically change that narrative. We need people to say, uh-uh, we're not investing a couple thousand dollars in hockey pucks. We are going to allow teachers to arm themselves on campuses. As such, scumbags, murderers, and rapists will look elsewhere for prey. You dig? That is the problem. 
That is the issue. And then we people that are carrying weapons need to go wear holes in your hands. You need to go wear a hole in your hand like that because you ran the gun long enough and hard enough that you have competence and confidence in your ability to deliver that righteous violence. Not a happy thought, you guys. I'm not saying it in a, in a manner that says, yeah, let's get some. I'm saying it in a way that if death comes to me prematurely and it's not a meteor falling out of the sky and it's not a heart attack, which I don't think it will be because I take good care of my ticker. If it's not those things, I'm not going to lay there and take it. This guy isn't getting cornholed and relaxing while, while somebody has their way with me and nor should you. Yeah, man, that comment there about the Bill of Rights, that is indeed the case. I talked about this recently in a few broadcasts that we've done. Who remembers, who remembers, uh, it is my one regret that I have but one life to give for my country. Who remembers that? As a noose was put around his neck, as a noose was put around that man's neck, and the Redcoats probably laughed as they hung him as a traitor, right? It is my one regret that I have but that one life. What are you going to do to proliferate and promote liberty? What are you willing to do to stop that kind of nonsense from happening at your college, the college that your tax dollars are paying for in your town? What are you willing to do to invest energy to change the narrative in your community? And the number one thing that you can do, number one thing that was Nathan, that you can do, top thing, is teach your children and then live a life that exudes that. Don't speak it and not live it because if you do that, you're just wasting, wasting more oxygen. Live it. Live it. You dig? Guys, I love to have these chats with you. Send us a message at training at carrytrainer.com if there's anything that I can do to help you. We've got classes coming up around the, uh, hey, chat. Classes coming up around the country. We've got some S12. The final S12 uh, early bird is up the end of this month. That's just a few days. If you guys need ammunition, Super Val Ammo, 25% off, regular, regular orders. Any order over a few thousand rounds, I can probably do a little better for you. We've got a big road to hoe, friends. We've got a big road to hoe. But you know what? If we all stand shoulder to shoulder and cut that out ourselves, you guys know what that means, right? A road to hoe. That's actually talking road to hoe. It's talking about getting out there and cutting, beating the sod up, right? Well, if we all do that together, many hands make light work. If we do that together, if we get out there, yeah, vote the jackasses out is good. But part of the problem is most politicians are afraid to do anything good because of we the people. What do I mean by that? Well, and when it comes down to it, the problems are not politicians. The problem in Mickey's eyes is average man because average man doesn't do shit average man just gripes average man is more interested in gossip than doing average man is really there just to pull pud and kind of let the world do what it's going to do and then they complain when they don't like it Hello, Northern Molly. You guys all stay safe. Take care. Proliferate good. Proliferate freedom. Don't let anybody hand you a freaking hockey puck and tell you that's what you get to defend yourself. Change the laws. Affect the laws. If you guys want help in that, send me a message. We can talk about it. Be well. Pass this on too. I'd appreciate it if you guys share this. 
not because it's for me, but because people need to hear what's going on and they need to hear to come up with ways to change it. Peace.